Welcome to Michigan's Great Beer State Podcast, brought to you by the Michigan Brewers Guild, celebrating 25 years of camaraderie. The Great Beer State Podcast shares the stories of our member breweries and the rich community of Michigan beer and brewing. Listen in, have a beer, and then check out mibeer.com for a full listing of member breweries, events, and more opportunities to explore and support the Great Beer State. Welcome to Michigan's Great Beer State Podcast. My name is Fred. I'm here with Scott and uh, looking forward to a great episode here. We've, we'll go over some updates as usual. We'll take a spin through our Brewer's Dozen uh, member shout out. And we've got a special guest from Heart, Michigan, Big Heart Brewing, Phil Thompson, with an interview we recorded during the Great Beer State Conference. Yes, in 2022. Right. So, Scott, we are, uh, as we record this, we're just a little after Summer Beer Fest. Uh, we're well into the 25th anniversary celebration. Any post Beer Fest thoughts you want to share with the world? Well, it was uh, a really nice festival. It was good to be back in Ypsilanti after a two year hiatus. Um, it's been just a few weeks since uh, we've actually recorded a podcast episode. Fred, you've been busy wrapping up the 25th anniversary documentary, and I was busy working on the festival. So now that the Summer Beer Festival is behind us, uh, it's on to the UP Fall Beer Festival and working on the Detroit Fall Beer Festival also. Yeah, here they come. It's, uh, it's beer and beer fest season for sure. Yeah. And yeah, we're happy to share sort of a premiere viewing of Great Beer State documentary uh, Friday night with the industry and Saturday with some enthusiasts uh, in Ypsilanti. And now uh, that's been polished up and is available for breweries and other supporters and uh, supporters of the guild to host viewing parties. And we're going to, so if you want to see that, uh, go to mibeer.com go to the 25th anniversary page and look for a schedule there. Uh, people are just getting signed up now. Um, you can encourage your local brewery, library, theater, art center, um, retailer to, uh, to sign up and then they'll get access to it. And um, that's sort of the way we're doing community viewings up through the uh, Detroit Fall Beer Festival. And then we'll we'll see what happens after that. But between now and then, uh, we're really uh, engaging this uh, community viewing through our members and supporters. So that's the update there. But it's fun. It's a collection of interviews that um, if you're listening to this on the regular, you've heard many of them. Um, full interview. And we've sort of strung together an arc talking about the origin of the guild some brewery origin stories, community, camaraderie, COVID, and looking ahead to what's next. So um, there'll be some interviews in there that you haven't yet heard, um, including a little snippet from Phil, who we're going to talk to today. So that's out there, uh, another way to celebrate 25th anniversary, and we hope you like it. Yeah, I know I really have enjoyed watching it come together and enjoyed watching the finished product. So I encourage everybody to, to find a, a viewing party or like you said, to ask around and, and maybe encourage one of your favorite places to, to schedule one. Yeah, I think what I like about it is the same thing I like about this podcast is um, I think you get a sense of the similarities and some of the differences when you start, when you hear an interview that's talking about opening a brewery in the 80s. Uh, there are some stark differences in terms of landscape and context and and the challenge of explaining what a brewery was or could be. And when you have that uh, alongside an interview from somebody who opened in the last five years or the last 10 years, you know, you can really get a sense for how much our community has grown and how much um brewing in general has changed over the years but especially in michigan and see that as a real positive and then you also see some of the same threads same motivations inspirations 
sort of little storylines that are pretty similar now even to what they were which is you know somebody wanting to bring this choice into a community and communities adopting it and and um moving forward it's i think that's you know you said it well many times and i think that's the one thing we keep seeing is that um you know brewing and and breweries and tasting rooms are really community builders so hopefully it sheds um some light on that and shows it in a unique way with many voices of our guild and community yeah i think it really does so uh anything else tickets are on sale for fall yeah for both fall festivals uh tickets are now on sale so of course those are at mibeer.com at our website same place you find uh information about the documentary and all things michigan brewers guild so yeah where it feels like we're kind of right in the middle of the 25th anniversary celebration to me and we've got a lot of collaborative brews out there as well right i saw a lot at the festival yeah it was that was one of the things we did was encourage uh collaborations or just beers in celebration at 25 years we didn't want to be too prescriptive with it because we wanted it to be easy for anybody to participate or exercise their own creativity so um they may be kind of uh, running on their last keg or or beyond it, but I'm sure there are some still out there. And uh, we had a, a unique pint glass made that many breweries participated in and purchased some of. And uh, those are really cool. This was the second year, so you can probably still find a pint glass out there here and there. Um, yeah, another great reason to go to your local brewery. Right on. Well, let's jump right into um, Brewer's Dozen. All right. Well, uh, if anybody's been following along, we've taken a couple of trips through the membership list. And this time we are going through uh, in alphabetical order. And today we're in the D's. And we're going to start in Walker at D Hops Brewing Company and Cafe. Walker is in the greater Grand Rapids area, I guess you could say. And we've got uh, Depot 36 in Rockford, Michigan. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm feeling like that's probably a little less known brewery, but it's a, a, a second operation of, um, of Bob Bonga's brewery at, and the Cascade Winery and uh, Jaden James Brewery. Sorry, I was drawing a blank there real quick. Um, but Jaden James expanded from their place in Grand Rapids to a second retail outlet in Rockford, and they've got a little brewery there. Nice. Uh, Detroit Beer Company in Detroit, longtime staple, uh, still a great spot. Absolutely. We've got Dimes Brew House in Diamonddale. And the Dixie Saloon Brewery in Mackinac City. Mackinac City has gained a, a few breweries as of late. Dixie Saloon's a really uh, cool place. It was built with a mezzanine level for a brewery when they rebuilt the place. And uh, after quite a few years, they they put a brewery in there. Uh, it's been there a couple of years now. And Downey Brewing Company in Dearborn. Drafting Table Brewing Company in Wixom. And Dragon Mead Microbrewery in Warren, another longtime member. Uh, Eric was a guest a few episodes back. Yeah, and they expanded to a second location in St. Clair Shores called Dragon's Landing. And then you've got Draft Horse Brewery in New Hudson. And heading to Marquette, there's Drifa Brewing Company, which is a cooperatively owned brewery. Took them a while to get the licensing figured out, I think. New concept, new brewery, or at least uh, I think that's what a year or two. So uh, cool to check that out. Eagle Monk, Eagle Monk Pub and Brewery in Lansing. Yeah, it's kind of a little outside of Lansing um, on Mount Hope Road. Fun place. And we'll wrap things up with Earth and Ales in Traverse City, which is on the grounds of the Old State Hospital. Great. So that leads us right into our special guest, Phil Thompson, 
Um, I worked with Phil for many years at New Holland, as you'll hear. And uh, uh, he had many different roles, but it was exciting to kind of uh, see him work with his family and, and bring a brewery to Hart, Michigan. Um, great story, I think great insights. And uh, it's a it's a common theme these days is um, seeing um, seeing the sort of gaps in the map close in and seeing uh, small communities that may have been off the beaten path for a while as the as the brewery growth spread. But now they've been open a number of years. Um, I'm probably scared to guess. It's probably been more than I think. Um, but they've had to have been open five, six, seven years. And so, um, and now there's, there's more breweries around them as you'll hear Phil talk about, but, uh, I think it's a great story and, and, uh, shows a little, um, interesting path to see somebody come into the brewing community, uh, who's, you know, Phil's story isn't one of, I always wanted to have a brewery. He found his way into the brewing business then an opportunity developed and now he's running big heart in heart michigan yeah i think that that was a unique part of phil's story is he, he was not a home brewer that finally took the leap and decided he'd have a uh, a brew pub or microbrewery um, he kind of gained his experience working with New Holland, and then he he brought that to another opportunity, and I think it shows when you go to Big Heart, they've done a really good job. You know, Phil was able to reach out and has done a good job having a, a brewer that makes good beer, and he's put together good food and a good atmosphere, and they, they did it in a thoughtful location that was tied to uh, his family, well, his wife's family, and um, it, it's really a, another great addition to the community. Yeah, and I think that um, it's a, it's another common theme here, and I'm probably going to say that every interview for a few weeks after having gone through all this footage for the last uh, few months. But um, you know, I think that the the tasting room being part of microbreweries and brew pubs as the licenses went with that change, uh, the law that came in '92, the tasting rooms are an interesting opportunity for breweries to kind of showcase the craft ideals and sort of that community building aspect because i think without tasting rooms it may seem obvious but the connectors in small towns like this i don't think would happen without being a gathering place and people coming in and really getting to know one another but at the same time breweries are different than um, they act logistically very similarly to a bar and restaurant, but there's something different. And I think that Big Heart's a great example of that. Yeah. And that sense of community is something that was important to Phil and his, his partner when they were planning and continues to be today. And that, that is one of the great things, whether you're going to a beer festival or a local brewery or brew pub. Um, that sense of community and friendliness and openness, I think, is something really special about our industry. Yep. So uh, we'll hand it off to Phil and big shout out to the whole crew at Big Heart and um, enjoy the interview. We'll catch you soon. Cheers to Phil Thompson and Big Heart Brewing Company. Cheers. Bill, welcome. It's great to see you. It's been a little while. Yeah, it's good to be here, Fred. So we are talking to people uh, about um, the Michigan beer community and your your own path in it. Okay. And uh, I'd love to start just hearing a little bit about how in the world did you, uh, a path I might have a little familiar, familiarity <laughs> with, but how did you find yourself in the Michigan beer scene? Um, I used to be in radio and my wife is from West Michigan. We were living up in Sheboygan in Northern Michigan and we wanted to move closer to her family. So I got a job with a radio station in Holland, Michigan. Uh, we moved to Holland in 2005. Um, and of course I found New Holland Brewing Company 
pretty quickly after that and became a Mug Club member and really loved hanging out there. Um, and had an opportunity to interview Brett Vanderkamp uh, on the radio station when we were trying to get the Sunday liquor laws oh, changed yes. and that AS whole path. Yes, to Sunday. Yes, yeah, AS to Sunday. Um, and volunteered to come down and get signatures and really got to meet uh, Sheila Cunningham and, of course, Brett, yourself, and some other people there at New Holland and really enjoyed the vibe and the people there and uh, the feeling uh, that you guys all had as a, a small, close-knit family. Um, so I had maybe a second interview with Brett, if I remember, uh, on the radio, and I just kind of pitched myself to him. Uh, and it just so happened you guys were looking for an event coordinator at that time, mm -hmm. somebody to uh, uh, kind of organize tours and kind of put a crew together and take care of festivals. And I jumped at the opportunity and that got my toe hold into the craft beer. And that was probably fall of 2007 yeah. that I joined on there, yeah. And then how long were you there and what other responsibilities did you end up? Uh, 2007 to about 2010, I was working with you, the sales team, doing event coordination, taking care of tours. And then 2010, I moved to the pub and took over a bar manager uh, at the pub there. And at that time, uh, spirits were just coming online. Uh, so we were able to kind of write a cocktail menu and form a beverage committee there and really get that going. We had zeppelin rolling out at that time and yeah. uh it was exciting to be a part of it was a good time uh, and i did that from 2010 until probably the summer of 2016 when i had an opportunity to leave and open up a new brewery up in hart michigan yeah yeah so that's exciting so you covered a lot of ground that's a yeah. number of years so um tell me about kind of how the opportunity showed up and, and how the vision for for Big Heart came to be? Um, my wife's cousin, uh, Leslie Hansen, who's our owner, uh, she and her husband are from Hart. Um, her husband owns a grocery store, Hansen Foods, there in town. Anyway, um, they really wanted to draw people to that small community. It, it's a town of about 2,000 people. It's right near the Silver Lake Sand Dunes. And for a long time, people would get off their exit and not come to Hart, but rather go to Silver Lake and not really spend any time at heart. Um, Michigan craft uh, industry, especially the beer industry, um, is really a draw for people. People will seek out breweries. So Dave and Leslie talked to me and they really wanted to open up a small brewery in Hart in order to draw people there. Number one, to get people to you know, like spend time at Hart itself, but also to show people, hey, it's an opportunity. You can open up a place in the small town and you can make it successful. You can make it thrive. It's a place where you can invest your time and money and it's gonna pay off for you. So um, they wanted to do that and kind of asked me if I wanted to come along and, and open it up and run it for them and jump to that opportunity as well, yeah. Yeah, so I guess I, it draws me to wanna to ask two, you know, different sides of that, sure. question, two different questions. Um, one of which, which we'll get to second, but I'll give you a little preview, <laughs> right. is thinking about, so with your experience and with all the time that you've had, I, I, I want to hear about, you know, this opportunity to create something from scratch. I just wonder what your early vision was in terms of what are the, what are the hallmarks going to be before your pen to paper, before the thing's happening, or where did you start to imagine? Okay. But alongside that, I guess they could be in either order. Um, I want to hear if you had reservations, if you had thoughts about you know, if there was any hesitation or any like, I don't know about this, like any concerns and then what were the vision, what was the vision that, that moved you through? There were concerns for sure. Um, starting up anything from scratch there, it's a gamble. It's a roll of the dice. You don't know if it's gonna make it or not. Um, my wife and I talked about it a lot. It wasn't something that was presented and we were just like dove right in. Um, working at New Holland, that was a great place, solid, growing, well-established place in Holland where we love to live. It's a great community to be a part of. Um, and picking up and moving to a much smaller town <laughs> um, and starting something new was scary as all hell. We were didn't jump right at it. Um, but it was also exciting. 
and intriguing. So that's where the brain kind of clicks over to what can we make of this? What's the possibility here? Not concentrating on the downside of like, well, what happens if it doesn't, you know, all the ifs, ands, or buts, but starting to think about, we have a chance to bring to that area. And at that time, I want to remember there was James Port up in Ludington. Ludington Bay wasn't open yet. I don't, I think Fetch might have just opened down on Whitehall, which is just south of us. Pigeon Hill and Unruly weren't in Muskegon yet, I don't believe, or they were just at the beginning as well. So there was a little bit of a hole in the map and being able to... You say 2016? 2016, yeah, okay. yeah. So we opened February of 2016, but the, the seed of the idea, the genesis happened in 2015 when we got the license and started that whole process. So it started before that. Being able to, I don't know, it may sound cheesy, but bring the Michigan brewing community to that area. Um, exposing um, some folks that may have not had a craft beer experience before or one they really liked, being able to kind of introduce them to that as well. And also, you know, bring, I don't know, a new business, a new life, something exciting and new to that community all seemed thrilling it, it yeah. really did yeah yeah it makes a lot of sense and that's yeah. been a hallmark of the brewing growth and community is that it's it's brought a pulse and an energy to a lot of small towns sure that hadn't had new things for a minute and i th think we saw that even um when we started interviewing people for positions um before the brewery was in, even finished we had an open house call for jobs. And we had it almost like a little mini job fair inside the building that was still under construction. Mm -hmm. And we had a huge turnout. Um, there were people that just wanted to work at a brewery, that wanted to have that experience. Maybe they had been somewhere somewhere else in the state or had an experience and they were like, wow, there's gonna be one here in our hometown. And we had a great, tremendous turnout. And people that were willing to learn. I through working with you and at New Holland, we did a lot with education amongst our staff and the community and being able to bring that, they were voracious yeah. uh, for that knowledge. And, you know, I took them through top to bottom and the brew process and beer styles and tastings and everything else. And they were just so excited to have something, an opportunity like that given to them. Yeah. Yeah, that's terrific. Because, you know, most of the wait staff have been slinging Bud and Bud Light at the local bar, yep. you know, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, but it was, it was just something new that was going to be made there. Mm -hmm. We're going to be making our product right in that building. They could be proud of the product that was made in the next room. Yeah. It, when, when a new, when a first brewery comes into a small town, it mm -hmm. often sends me back to what I felt like was almost everywhere in the mid nineties, which was, right. I felt like people didn't know beer was made anywhere. Oh, someone makes that in a place? That's how beer just arrived on the truck. It just shows up. Like, and, and I think that's part of what <laughs> you bring is like, no, actually, we can. Yeah. From ingredients, make beer, starts here, drank here. Yeah. Uh, that's a fascinating thing for somebody who hasn't been exposed to it. And we saw that uh, through our uh, customer base, too. There were, of course, uh, you know, in 2016, Craft Beer in Michigan was a known entity for sure. And lots of our customers have been to other places and then consumed it and that that was great but um educating the non-craft beer drinkers and there's this thing that we'd always say oh it's fancy beer it's you know cra you know it's not real beer no it's beer it's made the same way it's yeah. the same thing and here try this one oh that's really good yeah it's it's just beer yeah. it's gonna be great so did you have thoughts on what the hallmarks of Big Heart should be, whether that's beer style, whether it's uh, space or, you know, if what did you hope were going to be the recognizable features of your brewery? Um, Teo uh, Watson Allbrand is our brewer um, and he went to Eastern. He's got a biochem degree and he's got the science behind it, but he's also really creative. Um, his family's from Germany. Uh, spent time there in the summers with his grandmother, so he really wanted to concentrate on 
German styles, but also European, and and that was his slant. So the beers I had from him that he made were fantastic. So we had that formula set. Um, as far as the brewery itself and kind of its persona, um, we wanted to be a place where people could come and socialize, uh, families could come uh, and hang out, a place where we could build a small community um, ourselves, um, the mug club and, and everything else. Um, aesthetically, as far as the building itself goes, um, there's a long tradition of agriculture in the heart area. Asparagus capital of the world in Oceana County, uh, uh, Gerber baby food, a lot of the stuff that was made there. There were a lot of food processing facilities. Um, and so we had a sense of aesthetic to be more factory brick, wood. Mm. The outside of the building is painted a uh, color of green that a lot of those facilities were painted in the 40s and 50s. Um, so that's where we wanted to go aesthetically. But as far as just a vibe or a feeling, uh, being inclusive, being a good place to relax and hang out, have good conversation over good beer and good food. Yeah. Awesome. Pretty simple formula, but Straight can't forward. go wrong. Great. It's been missed on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> True. You know? um, yeah. I mean, it, that's, that's awesome. Um, so tell me about, I don't know, maybe put yourself back into the week or so before you open. <laughs> Uh, what was the anticipation like of, of the reveal of, of uh, putting the beer and the space and your your project uh, out into the community for real? What was that like? Well, leading up, like the last couple of weeks seemed like uh, the last mile of a marathon. You just want to get it over mm -hmm. and get to that finish line because you're just exhausted and stressed out. And I don't know if I slept much at all right in that last week but once the doors were open and we opened on a saturday it's february 20th and somehow in the middle of february we got just the, a bright sunshine blue sky day and once the doors were open and the ball was rolling and the machine was churning quite frank it, honestly i don't want to be cheesy again it was glorious it yeah. was there might have been a tear or two shed at that <laughs> sure moment that you know but sure i just that. remember sitting back watching the pace full of people that were just having a really good time and we messed up a ton of stuff that day of course but nobody cared everybody was just happy to be there and of course you know they're friends and family of of mine and and other people there and of course they're just gonna be happy regardless but seeing the community really show up and roll out and um yeah it was it was fantastic i i have a clear recollection amidst the chaos of everything that was going on just taking a moment and just looking around, stop and taste is what yeah, I thought of from the new holiday. Just like take your, give yourself a second just to enjoy this, just yeah. for a moment. Good just look around, look at the faces. Beer is pouring, food is being served, all is well. It was, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's six years ago. Yeah. Uh, happy six years. Thank you. What? What have been the biggest surprises, uh, maybe that changed from the the original idea? Things that developed or, or, evolved from what you thought uh, Big Heart was going to be to to what it is now. We um, we had very high-minded ideas uh, going in, which is, I think is the the right thing to do always. Um, and I think the thing I, the lesson I learned the most, which is something that um, our owner said to me, is like, listen to your customer. They're going to tell you what they want. So we had uh, what I think for Oceana County, where we are, we had some rather fancy dishes on our menu. Mm -hmm. And they were great, but people weren't quite sure what they were. So over time, we 
still do some of that fun stuff on the side. But you know what, people, they really like some wings, a burger, nice Reuben, you know, some mac and cheese, some stuff like that. So we still do quality stuff that's really good, that we take a lot of pride in, but it doesn't have to have the, uh, like crostini sale on it mm -hmm. or you know anything as far as that goes so listening to our customers and what they want is something that you know probably was i had to learn to do because i had an idea of what i wanted you want to force that idea and you want to yeah, make it yeah. work and you're like why am i beating my head against this well let's give them what they want and they'll yeah. be happy so yeah yeah and how you deliver it to them will will still involve your vision you yeah know? Absolutely. Um, so I'm wondering about intersection or sort of relationship to the broader Michigan beer and brewing community, having had your start at another brewery and, and being on both sides of it, meaning you're, you're out and about at events where you're going to connect to a lot of other brewing entities. And then you're also in the, in the tasting room, which is more address based. Sure. Um, what was your, I think this will be another two-parter and that I'd love to hear kind of what your what your view or relationship with the overall Michigan Brewing Community, Michigan Brewers Guild was throughout the, the first phase of your career and then how that's evolved now as a brewery operator. Sure. Um, I think the the thing that attracted me to New Holland in the beginning was that that family and that community within within New Holland. Uh, and then getting there and then getting a chance to um, go out on festivals or, or, or different events and um, meeting members of the larger brewing community in Michigan and realizing that same feeling existed on a much wider scale. Um, there's competition that's gonna happen all the time between different businesses and wanting to be better, but I've never gotten a sense that it is anything but supportive. Like, yeah, you might taste a beer at another brewery and go, oh, that's really good, damn it, why didn't we do? Or that inspires an idea. Or you can ask a question about how somebody does something else and that information is given pretty freely across the board. And that, that sense of community um, is really inspiring. Um, even coming here today and, you know, we haven't had a chance to get out and, and be in the community over the past, you know, however many months, a uh, year and a half, um, it always re-inspires those connections um, when you're able to walk around and, and see faces and exchange ideas and um, just talk and maybe commiserate sometimes about what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, so I've always, there's always been that sense of community um, that is really appreciated. Uh, and then in opening up Big Heart Brewing Company, um, and we got visited by people just driving through, or the folks from Fetch came up and Jamesport came down. And um, what do you need? Well, you know, here's what we did. Here's something that we ran into when we first opened, blah, blah. It was freely given. and. It wasn't me reaching out, but people would just stop in to see what was going on and support us and say way to go and, you know, and keep at it. And then whenever there's been an, uh, a moment where something is needed, you can call somebody. You can shoot off an email and you're going to get a response almost immediately. That'll be supportive. I mean, even as far as like we ran out of growler caps in, I don't know. June or July 2019, I called Dan down at Fetch and I'm like, dude, do you? He was like, yeah, come on down, grab some. How much do you eat? I'll come up and get a beer sometime. You know, don't worry about it. Yeah. So it's been fantastic. Yeah. And so, um, you know, now it brings us fast forward to uh, these last couple of years dealing with COVID. Yeah. And shutdowns. And I mean, what seems like a science fiction novel. Like, <laughs> uh, um, February 2019, I wouldn't have believed you. Uh, no. So I guess this question, you know, with, without, well, however you want to answer, whether we admire into the details or not, um, I don't really want to qualify it, but how have 
the things you hold dear about your brewery, your community, the industry, the industry community, how have they showed up during these last couple of years of the pandemic? Well, you know, just as far as our business goes, we had to reinvent ourselves and change our business model, you know, and that of course meant letting a lot of people go. Um, we used to do table service and, you know, have a full wait staff and like, like I said, a, a bigger menu, we had to just go to counter service and, and cut the menu down to the bare minimum, um, still do good work and everything. But those, that was, that sucked. It, it was no good. It was, you know, it was hard to do. Um, nobody's fault, but just to keep the business going, that's, that's what we had to do at that time. Um, but what I appreciated, um, you know, we're all in the same boat. Um, being able to talk to or commiserate with fellow uh, brewery guild members was great. And the Michigan Brewers Guild, you know, with information about, uh, you know, the paycheck per protection loans and here's the latest guideline and here's where you can find a resource for this information having that not having to reach out for it but just having it sent to me on almost a weekly basis was fantastic um just to know that uh, the brewers guild was behind us um wanting us to survive <laughs> to do whatever it can and give us all the information we could to do it was it felt supported, you know, that you weren't in a tiny rowboat in the middle of a storm all alone. Yeah. You were tying rowboats together <laughs> and getting through it, you know, all together. Um, so, yeah. That's great. Um, as you look forward, which has grown increasingly difficult to do, <laughs> um, but knowing you, I know that you are, um, what, what are your thoughts in terms of, you know, where, what's next for the rowboats and, and, uh, what are you hoping for in, you know, the next six years? I think for the past year and a half, I've been concentrating so much on survival that I haven't spent a lot of time looking down the road. It's just been the two steps in front of me mm -hmm. most of the time. And over the past maybe, I don't know, three, four months-ish, we're starting to like relax that a little bit and be able to look down the road. So with the changes that we've made at Big Heart, um, you know, it almost seemed like early on our entity, we were a restaurant tap room and we made some beer. And we've really changed the focus to, we're a brewery, we're a production brewery. And we have some great food and a great place to hang out. So we've changed our focus to distribution, uh, canning. We've actually reached the point where we almost can't keep up. So we've got to expand. So we're going to build out this spring, uh, add tanks in, and we've got a small canning line we've purchased. And, and really seeing that side grow a little bit has gone, oh, well, you know what? That's growing. Let's look at the other side of the wall where we'll call front of house or the the tap room itself and go what fun things can we start doing again mm -hmm. you know whether it's live music or an event or just something that gets people out and having a good time so we've actually been able to start planning those things so looking six years into the future, really uh, keeping uh, expanding distribution and let that uh, revenue stream really drive everything else that goes on inside the building. Still being able to have a fun, awesome place where people can come, good food, good beer, and hang out. We've gotten our uh, distiller's license, so we're distilling now as well. So that's another revenue stream for people inside and outside the doors. Um, so just steady, smart growth, keeping cost out. I mean, the pandemic really taught a lesson about keeping that bottom line as, as clean as possible. Um, so we're excited again for the future. We're not just thinking about, good Lord, can we make it another week, another month? 
we can actually plan and take a moment and go, yeah, so what are we going to do this year? What are we going to do next year? Yeah. Yeah, the year after that. And you're continuing to bring new things. If, the, if bringing a brewery to heart was, yeah. was surprising for some, bringing a distillery is, is certainly a step a step beyond that. Yeah, absolutely. Who knew? Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for putting all the beautiful beers in the world and, and, <laughs> and the space and the sense of community you have. I really uh, appreciate it. I'm a big fan of, of you and your family and, and Big Heart Brewing. So appreciate you being part of the community. Thanks, Fred. I think we knew it was big work, but I don't think we had the range of vision to understand what it was going to look like or how much of an impact it was going to have. I mean, State of Michigan, Travel Michigan, Pure Michigan recognizes craft beer as one of their top ten, maybe less, maybe top five, reasons people come to Michigan. It's part of our story. Michigan is an anomaly in the country for how powerful the guild is. When I first started, there wasn't many, there was probably only eight or ten other breweries. See, when I went to try to learn anything, there was only one other brewery in the UP, which was Hereford and Hops. And that's the only other brewery I could go talk to at the time. So it was pretty kind of limited. That first brew fest here <laughs> changed everything. <laughs> Craft beer is just totally accepted as the real beer now, and I think that's awesome. I remember thinking, how good I thought this was going to be for our fledgling industry because people didn't really see us as uh, an industry that had staying power. We're such a mature, established industry that people take so seriously. We have to make this a qualitative conversation. You should engage with our products because they're an enhanced experience and that there's something to this. Where I really got excited was, wow, this is the beginning of a whole new industry. Nobody's doing this. It actually put brewers in each other's faces and to try each other's beers. Different breweries adding six beers, eight beers, ten beers. You know, you've seen as many as 20 to 30 different beers. To have that connection where somebody feels like, you know, I, I know somebody. We see it as such an opportunity to develop uh, contacts and culture and knowledge. Like, hey, look, there goes, there, there goes Joe Short, you know his name's on this, I get to say hi to him. People love that. You know, I'll ask questions and he'll tell me anything. Hey, where do you get your supplies? How long does this, what's the temperature range on this yeast? Anything from A to Z. And they answer all my questions. I feel like we were a community of people that were really in love with what we were doing. That's what the guild's job was. It's like this is a group of people who got together for one purpose. For a little, a little engine that could think, like we pull up hell of a party, you know, four times a year for a lot of people. I'm very proud of, of the show that we put on. Just It just reaches out, it just spread out, and it, it touched everybody, and it became a cool thing to do. Congratulations on 25 wonderful years. We're going to keep growing, and here's to the next 25. <laughs>